Everybody, it's Sherry with Cards and More by Sherry and the Supply Garden and here we are today for day 11 of our 12 days of Christmas yes I didn't have 11 fingers so I had to make a cheesy little sign for you guys today we're gonna make a fun little upcycled project um, that is again handy for little gifts little takeaways from party favors uh, for to at the table settings if you're hosting a dinner different things like that and this is what we're making today, a little uh, treat tube. And if you haven't already guessed, this is made from da, 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 the humble toilet paper tube. So what we're going to do is we're going to smash in one end and just simply staple across there. And yes, I just ran out of staples on camera. Let me grab my antique stapler that belonged to my grandfather and use that. Look at this old thing. That is one old stapler. Anyway, I digress. So we staple across the bottom which sort of is like the makings of a sour cream style container you know where you would do the top the other direction but we're going to leave that top open then I have a piece of 6x6 six six pattern paper in this pretty maroon red burgundy kind of color and the trick to making this really wrap easily around your tube is we're going to spritz this with just a little bit of water. You don't want to do too much because you don't want the water to tear. And then, believe it or not, we're just going to crumple this baby up and squish it really good and undo it a little bit and do it the other direction. You want to kind of give this the look of fabric or old wallpaper or something like that. So we squish it up really good and carefully unfold it because you don't want to tear it. Again, if you're using a very thin paper, you want to be really careful when you do this. Now before I flatten this all the way out, I'm going to take some of my Vintage Photo Distress Ink and I'm going to hit these parts that are raised up. And I'm just basically pouncing this across here and it's going to hit those wrinkly raised parts and give this even a more distressed aged look than the paper already had. Okay, And you can do this as much or as little as you want or you can just completely omit this part if you don't like this look. Alright. See how that picked up on the tops of all of those? You'll see it better when I flatten it out. And then just carefully flatten your piece of paper back out. Okay, then you can see how that's picked up where those prominent wrinkles were. All right, now to adhere this to the toilet tube, I'm just going to use a good old glue stick. Um, today I'm just using this Elmer Craft Bond all-purpose glue stick. Um, this is another one that I've used that I like a lot. As far, and I'm not a big fan of glue sticks, I'll be real honest with you. Um, but this one I like, and this one seems to be pretty good. And you just want to really give this a good coating. Um, you could use liquid glue if you wanted to, but I would say since you're working with paper that's already been wet, wet, dampened, and wrinkled, uh, be really careful if you're using a liquid glue. Just make sure you get pretty good coverage, especially along the edges. Okay, alrighty. Now, check and see if you have a directional print, if you want it to go a certain way. Uh, now's the time to check that. Then we're going to take your toilet tube. 
line that edge up along the center bottom here and press down. Then we're simply, whoops, so then we're simply going to wrap this up and around, meet your edges. And if you have a few puckers and wrinkles, you can just kind of work them out. That is the beauty of working with the um, glue stick adhesive, is you do have some time to kind of fudge things around a little bit if you need to. Okay, make sure that seam is good and attached. Okay, then we have, you're probably thinking, oh dear Lord, what's she going to do with all that excess at the top? Well, this is going to be an open-ended uh, gift tube, if you will, and we kind of want the inside of that cardboard covered up a little bit, so we're just simply going to tuck and push and work all of this to the inside being careful not to tear anything work some of those edges down I kinda got a big blob there but that's okay you get the idea and see how that if someone does kinda happen to look down in the edge just a little bit you do have it covered Uh, if you don't like having this much, you could trim it off and then make little cuts so that it just, you know, pleats to the inside, if you will. Okay, there we go. See, doesn't that look pretty? It does kind of look like old um, tapestry material or wallpaper or something like that. Now, we want to um, have goop all over my hands now. We want to kind of cover up this bottom edge because it's not going to be perfect and it's not necessarily going to be pretty. So what I did is I took a piece of pretty satin stitched ribbon and I put um, sticky strip, quarter inch sticky strip on the back of it because I do want this to stick really really good. So we're going to peel that off. she says jokingly and I'm going to start on the back so that my, all my seams are on the back line it up as best as you can along that edge whoopsie wrap it right around to the front and then finish it off on the back and I kind of missed but that's okay See how that finishes that off on the bottom? I was thinking too, uh, something else that might work nice along here would be some washi tape uh, that you could even uh, completely wrap around the bottom if you wanted to. I've got some really pretty, pretty, pretty gold and silver washi tape I just got. Um, that would be gorgeous on here. Now for our uh, holder, I've taken uh, the same type of ribbon. I've got about 12 to 14 inches here. And on my opposite sides here, I'm going to take my crocodile and I'm going to punch uh, 1 8 inch holes. And I have it set to a quarter inch, so I know I'm going down the same depth on both sides. Punch one on this side. And then punch one on this side. I wanted to tell you too, I got this idea from, um, I just kind of stumbled across it on YouTube on Connie Stewart's YouTube channel. Um, she's much more energetic than I am, so you might enjoy watching her a little bit better. Uh, but she had some good tips uh, that she gave on this too. And one of them is um, the trick to making sure that your ribbon doesn't pull through doing a little double knot. Now when I think of a double knot, I tie one and then I tie another one. But here's what she did. Take your ribbon and like you're tying one little regular knot. But instead of pulling it tight here, put this around here again. And I think this is called 
I use it in my jewelry making sometime and I can't remember what it's called and just slide that up to the end and then you've got a nice thick knot that isn't going to pull through your hole that you punch. I want to say that's called a surgeon's knot but I'm not uh, but I'm not ha I'm not positive. I believe that's what it's called. So then we're going to go around over to the other side. Shove that ribbon through. And I probably could have used a bigger hole on this. Could have used the 3 16th, but I just punched an eighth of a hole. So here we go again. Loop it through like you're going to tie just a single overhead knot. And then put that tail through again. And then slide that up towards the end and tighten that. And there we have your knot for the inside. And if you want to trim that down a little bit more, you can. So there's our hanger, our decorative loop there. Now for the front, I took an image um, from some paper that I've been using. And I uh, fussy cut out Mr. S Old Fashioned Santa Claus. Matted him on some green cardstock and fussy cut around that and then I put a coat of um, Matte gel medium over the top of this because I find sometimes when you do that or Mod Podge or whatever you like to use it kind of enhances The colors in this image and since they're kind of washed out to start with um, I Did that on here and you maybe can't tell on camera, but it really helped bring his facial features out which I liked okay um, I'm just gonna mount him on here with some foam adhesive pop dots whatever you want to call them there's two or three of them down the back here And with a lot of these projects, since I've done these 12 projects here through the month and some uh, some other things that I had going on, I've created a lot of scraps. So I've tried to, as I've designed these projects, use as much as my scraps as I can without creating more of them. Okay, so there's Mr. Santa on the front. Then I took this little Merry Christmas that we, we used on one of our earlier projects. I think it was on the 2468 bag with clothespin and everything and I'm recycling it onto here and I'm just going to clip this onto the top like that okay now what I noticed about this one is although I've made it Christmassy if I wanted this to be for a birthday or even Easter or something else coming up I can just because I haven't glued it I can just slide this off and put some other greeting or sentiment that I want on this one since I used even though this is part of a Christmas paper pack it's really not Christmassy in and of itself isn't that pretty? that's a little um, cardboard piece that came in a rack that I got from somebody alright so there we have very simple decorations now let's talk about what to put inside of it this one I just stuck some tissue paper in um, on Connie's channel she had some really pretty um, that crinkly basket shred stuff I don't have any of that but let me show you how I made me a pile full of it I took some of these scraps that I have created uh, from a project I was working on yesterday I ran them through my crimper that's how you get that little corrugated crinkly look and then I just took my scissors and cut little strips off. Scrunch them all up. Oops, I got some extra scraps in there. And we can shove those down in here to give that look of those expensive crinkly uh, basket shreds that you would have to go to the store to buy. Now obviously if you needed a boatload of these for a big basket this wouldn't be the best way to do it. But for something this small it works just fine. So there we have a cute little um, candy treat container you could put a little package down in there uh, you know if you lived somewhere swanky where you could afford to give people a car for Christmas hey you could put the keys down in that baby hang them on a doorknob hang them with your stockings whatever you wanted to do you could even leave this off 
and you could close this like I said like a sour cream container where this goes this way just close this this way and then you've got a little closed off container I've even seen uh, recently where instead of closing it all like this you push the ends in like flaps and make your toilet tube into um, a, like a pillow box which is a great little idea so there's our project for today cute little cute little treat tubes that you've recycled and not spent a fortune on and again it's a great way for a, a party favor a teacher gift stocking stuffer all kinds of fun that you can have with these well I hope you enjoyed the show today guys and I appreciate you stopping by please like and subscribe to my channel and I hope you have a great day bye guys